one of the biggest things I've learned in, in all of this data ethics work is you really are evaluating your company. You're evaluating yeah. your opportunities. You're evaluating even your principles. I mean, you're evaluating yeah. a lot of things. And in any situation like that, I mean, this, there's so many, so much literature out there that, is, that has shown this to be true. Having a diverse team generally gets you to a better answer. Hello, and welcome to the next installment of Beyond Principles. I'm your host, Steve Mills, BCG Gamma's Chief AI Ethics Officer. And this episode, I'm joined by Mike Haley. Mike is the Vice President of Research at Autodesk, where he leads a team of researchers and engineers focused on emerging tech and, and how they can be used by people in society. And Mike's expertise spans a wide range of technologies from 3D graphics to scalable network architectures to AI and machine learning. But over the past year, he's been leading Autodesk's effort to integrate responsible AI into their product development. And, and having spoken to Mike along the way, I can say that Autodesk is really making incredibly rapid progress. And so I'm super excited to have him with us today. I know um, your insights, Mike, on, on how organizations can jumpstart their efforts will be really valuable. So thanks for joining. You're welcome. Thanks for having me, Stephen. It's great to be on. Of course. So, um, you know, I know Autodesk is still relatively early in the journey, but like I said, you've made really exciting and rapid progress. And so maybe you could just talk a little bit about how you think you're able to move so quickly. Yeah, I mean, there was probably two main factors, I would say, Stephen. The, the first one was the decision to focus on a pilot program at the beginning and not try to boil the ocean and do too much broad sort of company pivot towards a, a, a data ethics program. So what we did is we decided to choose a specific problem within the company where we could bring a data ethics focus and then iterate around that problem. And as we iterate on that problem, we therefore learn more about what we want to do in our data ethics program, but we're doing it from a, a very grounded perspective. And the other advantage of choosing a pilot like that is that it gets seen by the rest of the folks in the company as an accelerator. Right. It's actually a group that's coming to help you. There's always that 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 nervousness from any any product group or technology group that a, a security group or an ethics group or whatever is going to. It's time to pay the tax man. Right? It's, yeah. it's, you know, there's, there's this overhead that we didn't want that attitude. We wanted teams to see us as an enabler of something, a future value. So by focusing in on one specific area, we were able to work with them, understand their needs and kind of iterate. So that's the first. That's a big one. I would say the second one, quite honestly, is that we've been fortunate that we have a C-level staff at Autodesk that gets data ethics. I mean, that it's not that they understand every nuance of data ethics, but they understand the right. value of having a program. So that, that has never been an argument, actually. In fact, they asked me to take on the data ethics uh, initiative two years ago. So it was really from their behest that I began this, this, this work and our team got going on it. So that's helped a lot. Yeah, that's that's amazing. And I love the point you made on not being seen as an enforcement body. I think so much of this is about adoption and change management. So so getting to that collaborative mentality, I think, is really important. Exactly. Um, now, many organizations, you know, when they start out, I, I think they, they begin by creating that like the, the responsible AI questionnaire, right, based on their principles, work they've seen elsewhere. Um, and then engage with product teams to pilot, iterate, improve. And, and I mean, honestly, within BCG, that's that's the approach we took when we built our program. Mm -hmm. You know, our thinking at the time being having a solid starting point would be important. But I always wonder how much an approach like that contributes to this perception of like the ethics police, you know, that you were talking mm -hmm. about. And, mm -hmm. and so when you and I talked, I was really excited by how you approach this. You, you sort of flipped it on its head. And you started with the product team deep dives and then worked back to the questionnaire. And I find myself wondering if that really helped avoid this view of the enforcement body. So, so just interested, what drew you to follow this approach and, and how have you found it to be so far? Right, right. Well, so so let me first say it's it's, it's possibly too early to tell whether it's a complete success. <laughs> We've been, yeah. we, but but let me yeah let me let me explain how we went about this. So Autodesk actually has a really rich history 
doing customer research. I mean, any of you, the, right. anybody that's used our products know that the, the user interfaces of Meyer and AutoCAD and Inventor and Revit and these kind of are very, very complex. And they're, 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 they're built for, you know, people to design and build really complicated things. So there's, there's a lot of um, user understanding and workflow understanding that we've had to get good at over the lifetime of Autodesk. So what we actually decided to do, Stephen, is to use those skills internally inside Autodesk. So instead of building out, like you said, a, a full you know, data ethics questionnaire for every team that's beginning a new data project, we decided again to focus in on a few teams, just as we would normally focus in on maybe a, a small customer cohort for a, for a new product. So we would treat those teams as customers. And then what we did is we we talked to them in the beginning, understood where they were, and developed a very, very early set of questions. And in fact, the questions weren't even in a form or online. They were actually just done in a meeting. So they were done in, yeah. a, in an interactive way so that we could actually video people, we could listen to them, we could understand where they may get confused with some of the questions or yeah. with gaps in the questions, whatever. And that allowed us very much again in the similar way we would do with products to start iterating our assumptions um, and start understanding more about, you know, where we want to evolve those, that, that questionnaire too. So, I um, mean, you know, we've, we've, we've been doing that now with, um, I would say three or four machine learning teams across the company over the last uh, five or six months. And it's really given us a ton of data now. So now we're we're yeah. now on probably the third revision of that, and it's beginning to crystallize. For example, we discovered that using things like model and data cards at the beginning was a really nice, you know, way to um, give teams kind of pre-work to do before yeah. filling out the questionnaire. We simplified the model and data cards, but still we found them yeah. coming with some pre-structured information was useful. And then we refined down the questionnaire. So we're still on that journey, like I say, but we, we feel that this sort of build, you know, iterate and build from a simple uh, focused uh, sub team is the way to get there. Yeah, I, I so love that approach. I think it's it's such a great way to do it. And I think it short circuits a lot of the issues you might often run into. Yeah. So so when we started out, I was really fortunate, you know, in that I had a small team of dedicated resources right right from the beginning. But that's not the normal way all this unfolds. You know, I, I talked to a lot of companies and and almost every time it starts with a group of dedicated, passionate folks, but who are effectively volunteers, right? They're doing it on top of their other duties. And I know that's how you started as well. But recently you added your first dedicated role, which I think is a really exciting and, and incredible milestone. So congrats on that. I'd, I'd love to just hear your thoughts. Like what was the catalyst for jumping to having a dedicated role? And, and do you think there's lessons learned you, know, you can share from having used a team of volunteers? Yeah, it's, I mean, it's interesting. And in some ways, I'm a volunteer, although I would say I was more sort of vol voluntold, maybe. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but, but yeah, no, I mean, definitely when I first created the effort, I, you know, I certainly didn't have a dedicated team at all. It wasn't even really my core role. I ran research, um, but I'd, I'd formerly been running AI at Autodesk. So I was connected with a lot of the folks across the company that were thinking about data. And the minute, you know, I put out a notification across the company that we were beginning uh, sort of an early effort around this, you know, there were probably at least 50 people that came out of the woodwork oh, wow. to say, hey, you know, I'd really be interested in participating in some way, you know, some less, some more, but I mean, there was yeah. definitely pretty broad level of interest, which, you know, on one hand, didn't surprise me, but it, 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 it was great that, it, you know, suddenly we actually, you, we didn't feel so lonely <laughs> you know, doing this, in this project. So, so, so we began to get this group of people together really in the beginning to actually do some research, some internal research to figure yeah. out, you know, where, wh wh how do people think about data ethics? Where are the problems today? What are the risks that face us? That kind of thing. So in doing that, we recognized that one of the advantages of having this sort of volunteer force is that it kind of naturally leads to diversity. And oh, yeah. I mean, one of the biggest things I've learned in, in all of this data ethics work is you really are evaluating your company. You're evaluating yeah. your opportunities. You're evaluating 
even your principles. I mean, you're evaluating yeah. a lot of things. And in any situation like that, I mean, this, there's so many, so much literature out there that is that has shown this to be true. Having a diverse team generally gets you to a better answer. You know, so yeah. so this I we fortunately we didn't even have to try to create that diverse team. It sort of naturally came out of the fact that this was a broad group of volunteers. So it got the program going on on a, on a, on, a, on a good basis. Once we'd created the program of these volunteers though, and we started building the early frameworks and we started to engage with machine learning teams on the pilot, for example, that I mentioned earlier. Yeah, yeah. Um, that, that gradually turned into being part of the workflow of some key teams, right? Some product teams that were then slightly dependent on us. They were waiting for us to give them some guidance or give them a tool or give them something. So all of a sudden, we weren't just a team that was meeting every week to figure out where we were going. We were actually yeah. a team that was responding to the needs, the critical needs in some cases of other teams. So that that then led me directly to starting to create you know, more permanent roles because it's and I, I, I couldn't create a, 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 an in, internal workflow in Autodesk that was dependent on a bunch of volunteers. Right. It was critical path, for example, for, for a bunch yeah. of teams. So, you know, we, we, we brought on um, Alec, who's, who's just joined my team in the last uh, month. You know, he has a background in both technology and sort of customer, both customer research as well as the kind of product manager side of things. So yep. he's got this interesting balance of really getting the technology level, but also understanding it from the context of a customer. So you know he's taken on a lot of the the the, the full time work that, like I said, that teams are depending on us for. Um, we will continue to grow this you know this effort i mean i think this is I, I would imagine us adding several more people to this over at least the next two years as this begins to scale but we will always maintain i believe this volunteer effort as well because it's it's almost a little bit of the check and balance for this team it gives us this diverse perspective across the company of people that are really engaged they can question us they can keep us on our toes and they're actually a, a great force for us to come and ask questions of the company it's a, it's a it's a forum if you want that we can constantly use yeah, that's great. And I, I just think it's really exciting to see that that catalyzing for you. And I love the organic nature of of how that developed and the fact that you're not seeking to replace the volunteers, but use the position to scale them and deploy them more effectively. I, I think it's just such a great model and it's a different way than I mean, many people are looking at it. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I think there's a lot to be learned there for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and so this sort of leads me to my, my final question. You know, as you step back, and think about the journey you've been on to date. What are the three pieces of advice you'd give an executive that's really looking to jumpstart, you know, a responsible AI or data ethics initiative at their company? Yeah, I'm glad you said three because there's exactly three yeah. very important things that I, <laughs> that I think. And so I've, I've I've probably alluded to at least two of them. So I mean, the first one is find the early believers. You know, there there, there are a lot of people in. As I've talked to other companies across the spectrum, I keep bumping into people at all levels of companies that are interested yeah. in data ethics, they're curious. So they undoubtedly exist in your company. Find yeah. them and empower them, bring them together, right? So that's yes. number one. Second one, what, which I've mentioned several times, is focus on a pilot. Don't try to boil the ocean. Mm -hmm. Data ethics is inherently a fuzzy thing. It's got fuzzy boundaries. It can, you can treat it as an operational thing. You can treat it as a technical thing. You can yeah. treat it as a part of product management. You can do all sorts of things with it. And if you try to do too much, you'll get lost and end up doing nothing. So focus on a pilot right from the beginning. That, that will get you going and it'll get you learning. Really, really important. The third and the, the, in some ways, the most important one from a business perspective is see data ethics as a value driver. So mm -hmm. data ethics is not about adding security later on to your product or doing something like that. Data ethics is really about creating value for your business and your customers. Because if yes. you, you take a true data ethics approach, your customers are gonna genuinely trust you because you are literally yes. behaving in a trust engendering way with them, which will lead to growth in your business. It'll lead to growth in their products. It'll lead to goodness in the future. So you need to see it in the same way as you would see a valuable feature in a, in a product. Yeah. 
Yeah, and I can't ag- agree enough. I think way too many people are viewing viewing this as just pure risk mitigation. And yes. this is that whole upside potential that that leads to just so much value to your point, not just for the for the company, but for the customer themselves. I couldn't agree more. That's great. Listen, Mike, thank you for for joining. This has been a great discussion. I know anybody, you know, struggling to get started is really going to appreciate the insights you shared. Yeah, no, you're totally welcome, Stephen. I, 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 I'm loving seeing the number of people that are jumping onto data ethics yeah. these days and anything we can, how, any way we can all work together to help people understand what to do, the, the better it is for everyone. So, Great. Well, thanks again. And, and thank you for joining us. Um, be on the lookout for the next episode. We're going to continue the, our discussions on how to move beyond principles and really operationalize responsible AI within an organization. And we look forward to seeing you then. Thank you. Thank you.